I remember moving from South Africa to Toronto almost 25 years ago and writing to a friend back home, because we didn't have email back then, that, you know, these Canadians, they speak English, but it's really a different language, A. Eh? Mr. Contest Chair, most welcome guests and fellow Toastmasters, Tonight I'm going to share with you some funny words and stories that got some really odd looks those first few weeks, months, and years. The first word I'm going to share with you is the word, the torch. Now, to a South African, a torch is, we call it a torch. To a Canadian, you call it a flashlight. Now, to a Canadian, of course, a torch is something that people used in medieval times. You can just picture a, a monk running down in a dark castle with a big torch flaming. And in modern times, we use a torch on Olympic Games. So I got some pretty odd stares. It was that first week at work, my new job, and we had a power outage, and the lights went off. And I jumped up and said, does anybody have a torch? I need to go to the washroom. <laughs> We've got some really odd stairs. <laughs> Another word that also created some confusion was the word, the flat. Now, we call it a flat. Canadians call them an apartment. And of course, to a Canadian, a flat is a flat tire, which we call a puncture. <laughs> Now, in those first couple of weeks, I really got some odd stares. I would tell people that I was living in a flat in Thornhill. And those odd stares, I just initially took it for granted that I was living in Thornhill. It was probably just a rough part of town. And I started frantically looking in the yellow pages to see about moving, little did I know, the dangers of Thornhill. <laughs> <coughs> Another funny word that came to mind is we call it a boot. Canadians call it a trunk. But to a South African, a trunk is what an elephant has. And to a Canadian, a boot is something that you have on your feet. You have a winter boot in the middle of winter. So you can imagine when I went into the car dealership and I said, look, I'd like to buy a car with a boot. The salesman gave me a bit of an odd stare. And I thought, well, I better clarify. I said, you know, a boot, somewhere where I can keep the spare tire in case I get a puncture. <laughs> and I saw the penny drop, and he looked at me, and he said, oh, he said, you mean a trunk? And I thought to myself, they sell cars in Canada with trunks? <laughs> <laughs> it must really hamper visibility. So it certainly created some confusion. Another word that I'd like to mention is, we call it a tutor. Canadians call it a horn. You know that thing on the steering wheel, honk honk. Now of course to a South African, a horn is something that a rhinoceros has. So it's all very confusing. And to, an, to a Canadian, you know, hoot or hooter, <laughs> at least one of the definitions, <laughs> is an owl. You know, they go hoot, hoot, hoot. <laughs> and so there was some real confusion back in South Africa when we read in the, in the newspaper that there was an American restaurant chain opening up called Hooters. And people were walking around scratching their heads thinking, hey, opening up a restaurant chain with Hooters? Are, they, are you going to sit in there and have horns you're going to honk? It was really confusing. <laughs> <laughs> and I also got thinking in those sort of first few weeks that I was here, you know, these Canadian car companies, they, it's really nuts. They sell cars with trunks and horns. These Canadians must have a real animal fetish. It just really sounds crazy. 
Now, the last story I want to tell you is a little bit of a, of a saying. When, when a South African says, see you later, we mean literally we're going to see you in about 10 or 15 minutes. It's very <laughs> specific. Of course, to a Canadian, when they say, see you later, it's just like saying, so long, I'll see you whenever. It's not specific. So there I was, four weeks in Toronto, fresh off the boat, and I decided it was time to get a, get a date, mix and mingle, and I called up this girl, we set up a date. I had a lot more hair back then, so it was, of course, a lot easier. <laughs> and I, I even got her to drive. I didn't have a car, of course, I tried to get a car, but I wanted a car with a boot, and all I could get was one with a horn and a trunk, so I didn't get one yet. And off we went on the date, and it went really well, at least I thought. And at the end of the evening, we pull up to my flat, and she says, look, I had a really nice time, she said, and I'll see you later. <laughs> so to me, of course, see you later, I'm thinking, wow, 10, 15 minutes, she's going to park the car, and you know, she's going to come up for a nightcap. You know, these, these car companies seem a bit out to lunch, but the women seem to know what's going on. And so I dash upstairs to the apartment, or the flat, I should say, do a whirlwind cleanup. I put away the torch, because we had a recent power outage, splash on some lethal cologne, and sort of set up an enticing pose on the sofa, and I wait. And I wait. <laughs> <laughs> and I wait, and I wait. Needless to say, that was one of my early lessons around see you later. <laughs> well, it's been a wonderful almost 25 years in Toronto. But thinking back, you know, I almost didn't make it. When I came through passport control, the immigration officer said to me, Welcome to Canada, he said. Tell me, where are you staying in Toronto? And I looked at him and I smiled. I said, Oh, I'm going to be living in a flat in Thornhill. Just the content here.